What makes a filament sensor smart? I'll be looking at Big Tree Tech's smart filament sensor today on The First Layer. Hey everyone, Brian here with The First Layer, the show where we explore the world of 3D printing. Filament runout sensors have become a hot item ever since larger machines such as the CR10 showed up on the market. With larger format machines consuming more filament, it has never been a more important time to consider adding a filament runout sensor to your printer. If you haven't seen my previous video on the Triangle Lab filament runout sensor, check the link in the upper right to see it in action. With the success of the Triangle Lab sensor, I wasn't really on the lookout for anything to replace it. However, Big Tree Tech's offering of a smart filament sensor really caught my eye. The device is a bulky inline block that you mount in between your extruder and your hot end. The biggest touted feature is the ability to detect filament breaks and jams. My current runout sensors are incapable of detecting a breakage, which has plagued me before. So how does the smart sensor handle this? Let's take a closer look. Contrary to the name, there's nothing really smart about the smart filament sensor. Rather, it handles filament motion detection in a more advanced manner versus traditional switch-based sensors. The sensor uses a technique called rotary encoding to determine if filament is moving. Rotary encoding works by using a light source and a light receiver separated by a slit disk to determine motion. The slit disk on the smart sensor is simply a wheel with round holes spaced evenly around the inside of the wheel. This wheel is pressed up against another bearing which comes directly in contact with the filament. The entire assembly is spring-loaded to press firmly against the filament. Located on the other side of the case is a second bearing, allowing the filament to be pinched between the two bearings. This allows a bit of tolerance if the filament diameter varies. When filament is inserted and begins to pass through the assembly, the encoder wheel will rotate. As the light begins to pass through the edge of the holes, the signal will form an analog wave similar to a sine wave. As an analog signal is of no benefit to our printers, the wave is passed into a Schmidt trigger chip, converting our sine wave to a square pulse. The signal is sent back to the main board along a single wire with the remaining two conductors used to power the sensor itself. Marlin then monitors the pin for a change in state from high to low or low to high. If it does not see this change when extruding, it indicates the filament is not moving in the sensor. This can indicate either there is no more filament present in the extruder, or the filament is jamming. The latter issue of jamming is something that a switch-based runout sensor cannot detect. A switch sensor relies on the depression of filament to push the switch down. Although it can detect if no more filament is present, it does not have the ability to detect if a piece of filament is broken off inside the sensor or if that piece of filament has stopped moving. So now that we understand how the sensor works, let's go ahead and hook it up. For today's example, we'll be connecting to the SKR Mini E3 1.2 board. Before we get started, be sure to look up the I.O. layout for your particular board. In order to connect successfully, you'll need to know the pin layouts to understand what each wire does. While you're looking it up, feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be informed when new content comes out. Okay, now we're ready to hook up our connections. There are three wires, one for power, one for ground, and one for return signal. The wire separated from the other two is the voltage wire. The middle wire is the signal wire, and the last wire is ground. For the Mini E3, it's recommended to use pin PC15, also known as E0 stop. As the E0 stop only contains a ground and PC15 connector, we'll need to pull the power from elsewhere. For this board, I recommend using the PT detection connector, as the layout is the same as the provided cable for ground and power. To move pins, you simply apply a small amount of pressure with a flathead screwdriver to the exposed pin on the connector, then gently pull back to remove the cable. Although you can plug these directly into the board, I highly recommend you purchase a JST-XH kit and make a second connector as shown. Connect the black connector to the PT detection socket and connect your newly created connector to the E0 stop socket. That's it! For the software side, we'll need to make a few modifications to configuration.h. To enable the filament runout sensor, we'll need to uncomment define filament runout sensor located in configuration.h. In this section, we will also need to uncomment the filament runout distance millimeters and set the value to 7. If false positives occur, you may need to increase this value. Lastly in this section, 
we uncomment define filament motion sensor. We'll also need to enable the nozzle park feature. And finally, uncomment advanced pause feature in configuration advanced.h. Build and upload your firmware and you're good to go. To install on your machine, unscrew the current Bowden connector leaving your extruder and replace it with the provided connector with the short Bowden tube. Slide the Bowden tube into the connector on the top of the sensor and connect the Bowden going to your hot end to the bottom. So how does the module perform in a real world scenario? As I personally have very few Bowden setups left, I attempted to mount the runout sensor at the top of my Ender 3's frame. The cable barely reached the 500mm gantry, but didn't catch on the bed. During my first few attempts, I had a near constant runout detection activating. After some investigation, I was the only person to blame for the issue. If you decide to mount the sensor before your extruder assembly, you will be subject to no motion changes during retractions. As well, as the hot end moves across the X gantry, it will pull more filament from the reel, creating a region of slack. To compensate for this, I had to experiment with the millimeter runout distance so as not to falsely trigger. For most prints, 100 plus millimeters was a fine safe threshold. Once this setting was dialed in, the sensor worked exactly as expected. If no pulse change was detected and the runout length was passed, the printer parked the nozzle to execute a filament change. Now this scenario is not for the average user. However, I wanted to test the limits of an encoder-based sensor to see how many scenarios it could handle. I have been pleasantly surprised with its versatility on direct drive setups, even if it's a hacky approach. If you have a Bowden setup, installing downstream of the extruder will provide the most accurate and instant indicator of a lack of movement. So what do I think about this sensor? So far, it's lived up to all my expectations and performs exactly as described. My primary issue with my previous sensors was filament breaking due to brittleness and having the print continue as the filament broke off inside the sensors. As the smart filament sensor is motion based, there is no way to trick it into thinking there is filament present. On the positive side, the sensor is cheap and very effective in what it promises. The filament is tightly gripped on the inside and moves through with no additional play. The sensor is an easy three wire setup and should be compatible with nearly every board on the market which supports any filament runout systems. With regards to the improvements, the unit is indeed heavy and bulky. Although it won't weigh down your carriage, the module hangs in a clunky fashion off the extruder. You will likely want to print a mount or zip tie it in place to prevent it from bouncing around while printing. The documentation isn't stellar, but it is at least available on their GitHub page. It took a good while to sort out the wiring as the indicators on the conductors varied between the documentation and what I was provided. With that being said, I found the module to be impressively reliable, and I'm definitely considering as my main runout system on my larger machines. After losing several six-day prints and wasting nearly two kilograms of filament on each attempt, only to lose the print due to brittle filament, this is a huge money saver. But what are your thoughts on this sensor and other runout sensors? Have you shared the successes I've experienced, or was there a struggling point with the integration of the smart sensor? Let me know in the comments below! Well, that's it for today. If you want to engage with us, subscribe to be notified when we go live every Saturday night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. We answer your questions live on Ask for Help. Until next time, remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print. Bye for now.